All right, so moving on through our systematics and taxonomy unit, where we've come to the domain bacteria. We've already talked about the domain archaea, uh, two of the three different domains into which all living things form, the other one being the eukarya or the eukaryota. The, the bacteria include all of those organisms within the kingdom eubacteria. So we'll move on, we'll talk about five different groups uh, within the domain bacteria. The first of which is the proteobacteria. Within this group, there are three subgroups. We've got the purple bacteria, the chemoautotrophic proto proteobacteria, and the chemoheterotrophic proteobacteria. Let's work through these one at a time. The first of which, the, pro the purple bacteria. Um, uh, most of them are photoautotrophic. Um, some are photo heterotrophic. Let's explain what this means. Uh, looking at the, the root word with the prefix being photo, it has to do with light. We know that autotrophs are able to produce their own nutrients um, and they produce their own nutrients via light. So kind of like photosynthetic organisms do. These pur purple bacteria, some are photosynthetic, some are photo heterotrophic. So meaning that they're able to obtain uh, organic materials separately, but they can also do it um, using light. So they're kind of versatile in that way. Uh, we know that obligate anaerobes, we've talked about this term before, they're obli obligated to be where it's anaerobic. They can't survive in conditions that are aerobic. Water or Oxygen is poisonous to them, excuse me. Secondly, after the purple bacteria within the proteobacteria group, we have the chemoautotrophic proteobacteria. These are able to produce their own nutrients, but they do it using chemicals. One specific one and one that's very, very important uh, for us and for, for life on Earth are the, uh, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They fix nitrogen out of the soil, out of the air, and they, and they turn it into a usable form, something that the plant can use. Um, there's a lot of nitrogen in, in fertilizer because it's, it's essential for plant um, metabolism. So these will grab nitrogen out of the soil, um, grab the nitrogen out of the air, and turn it into usable forms. They live in these little nodules, as you can see, um, in the roots of some legumes, alfalfa, peanuts, for example. They live within here. They have a symbiotic relationship, all right? They're provided housing here, um, and they pull the nitrogen out, and the plants use it. Chemoheterotrophic proteobacteria. They can use chemicals to produce their own nutrients, or uh, they can uh, obtain them in other ways. Where do they live? In intestines. Right? They live in the guts of, of many mammals, of, of a lot of organisms. One example is E. coli. E. coli is, is a natural part of our flora within, within our intestines. It's, nece it's necessary. We need it to help break down food to help get nutrients. Now, if we have too much of it, that's a problem. It can poison us and make us very sick. Um, but it is necessary. We need some of it there. Salmonella is another example. Now, it's, it's, it's a negative. It's a bad one um, that can make us very sick. These are facultative anaerobes, which means that they can, they can perform both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. They're very tolerant uh, of both situations. So the first type, proteobacteria. Let's move on. Gram positives. This has to do with gram staining, um, and, and it's a it's a way to, to classify these different bacteria based on the makeup of their cell wall. All members of the domain bacteria have a peptidoglycan layer. Those bacteria that are termed gram positives right here is gram positives. Their peptidoglycan layer is very thick and I'll show you an example of that. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Those bacteria who are, who are, are found to be gram negative, their peptidoglycan layer is very thin. So how does the gram staining work? Well, there's some components here that I've detailed for you. First of all, uh, you, need to, you need to first fix them onto some kind of slide. And I haven't uh, included that in, but that seems kind of obvious. Once you have them on the slide, you, you dye them with violet, or some kind of violet dye. And wherever there's an arrow, we're rinsing with water. We rinse it with water, and then we add a Graham's iodine to it. We rinse it with water. We add a, an alcohol, an ethanol to it. Decolorization happens. Rinse it, 
and then we add a red dye finally. Okay, why do we do all these things? Here is um, a, a rudimentary representation of the cell walls or the cell membranes of these of these uh, bacteria. This is a gram-positive bacteria. It has a phospholipid bilayer, a cell membrane here, and outside of that has a, a very thick peptidoglycan layer uh, made up of protein and carbs. Um, it's 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 very thick, especially if you look over here with relation to gram-negative bacteria. They have two phospholipid bilayers. They have one on the inside of the peptidoglycan layer, and they have one on the outside. Um, there are some ramifications for this that, that we may talk about, but what I mostly want you to notice here is that the peptidoglycan layer is very thick over here in the gram-positive, uh, very thin in the gram-negative. So, what are the results of this? Well, what we do when we are um, we had our, 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 our stain, first of all, if you go back, recall, I put it up here for you, our violet dye. All right, and I'm not sure I have violet, I'll just use red, I think red's okay. And when we put the, the, the dye in, we're going to end up with a whole bunch of dye molecules on the inside of both of these. They're going to be able to penetrate through the peptidoglycan layer, through the cell membranes, and they're going to accumulate on the inside. Remember I said wherever there's an arrow we rinse. All right, we're going to rinse and then um, they don't come back out. But when we add iodine, the iodine and the violet dye form a complex. All right, and it's a larger complex. So you're going to end up with these dye particle slash iodine complexes on the insides of both of these bacteria both gram positive and gram negative. All right, so we have our complexes on the inside. And as you would look at these on the slide now, they'd both be purple, they'd both be violet because of that dye. The alcohol step, you add ethanol, <clears throat> and what it does is it desiccates this peptidoglycan layer. It um, dehydrates it, and that's what alcohol does. If you ever wash your hands um, with alcohol or put alcohol in a cut, it dries out your skin. It's going to dry out the pe this peptidoglycan layer, and when it dries it out, it's going to make it much, much thinner. So this layer is going to be thinner. This layer is going to be thinner. It's already very thin. It's going to be even thinner. All right. Next, we've got an arrow, so we have to rinse it with water. Here's the key thing. This is thinner than it was. This is thinner than it was, and it's very, very thin now. So when you rinse this, this already thin peptidoglycan layer is so thin that the rinsing will allow these purple or violet dye particles that have complexed with the iodine to leave. This, while it started quite thick, is a little bit thinner because of the desiccation from the alcohol, but it's still thick enough that these can't escape. So it's retained. This violet dye is retained. The violet dye leaves. Final step, add a red dye, a saffron dye. Put the red dye in, and it's kind of like in a gram positive, uh, is not noticed within the purple. The purple is very prominent. It's kind of like if you're uh, eating a steak and you get steak sauce on your shirt. It doesn't matter if you have a black shirt on, okay, you're not going to see it very much. It's kind of the same idea here. Um, if the pink stain going in with all of this violet isn't really noticed. But all of the violet here was washed out. And so when you add the final red or pink dye, it's very, very noticeable. So this ends up being purple, and our gram negative ends up being pink. And that's how they're classified, all right? Third type, sorry to, there's the bell, sorry to throw that at you very quickly like that. Uh, chlamydia is the third type uh, within the domain bacteria. It's parasitic, meaning that it requires a host. It cannot metabolize and make its own ATP very harmful, uh, can cause uh, bacterial induced blindness, it can cause urethritis, uh, whenever you see something ending in itis, that means it's inflammation, so you have an inflamed urethra. Fourth, we've got the spirochetes, spiro, the spiral meaning that they're spiral shaped, here's a picture of them up in the upper right, they're large as well, uh, they can cause such diseases as syphilis and Lyme disease. 
Finally, we have the cyanobacteria. Um, really, last but not least, these are very, very important uh, to life on Earth. If you recall when we talked about life's beginnings, they're very important for the, the Cambrian explosion, uh, for the establishment of oxygen in our atmosphere, for our ozone layer. They're the reason that any of us are here right now because these are photosynthetic, they're photoautotrophic organisms. They're similar to chloroplasts in that they have two photosystems, so they carry out uh, a very complex form of photosynthesis. It's thought that perhaps the cyanobacteria were taken in by cells and, and became uh, chloroplasts, according to the endosymbiotic theory. They're colonial. If you look down here in the lower right, these are, if you recall, uh, stromatolites, which are colonies of these cyanobacteria. Anabena is an example. Uh, used to be called blue-green blue algae. You'll learn as we travel through this taxonomy unit that many things are changing, okay? Um, back um, several years ago, that used to just be Monera. It used to be all of these uh, prokaryotic organisms thrown into Monera. But classification is becoming more uh, of a science because of the advancements in genetics. So we're getting it right, and we'll get it right eventually. But um, we'll keep moving through our unit.